Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson. Today is Saturday, January 20th, 2024. And today I'm talking about PFAS and forever chemicals. Now the Center for Disease Control on January 18th issued guidance to doctors regarding exposure to these chemicals called PFAS. I'll spare you the chemical name. Now, about 90% of us have been exposed to these things. They're called forever chemicals because they don't break down easily. They build up in the human body and the environment. We are exposed to these forever chemicals through the water we drink, the food we eat, the products we use, the clothing we wear, and the air that we breathe. They're used in almost everything, folks, from our cell phones, outdoor equipment such as tents. They're used in makeups and cosmetics. They're used in raincoats, athletic wear, nonstick cooking pans, contact lenses, sports bras, tampons, mascara, shampoo, dental floss, some brands of toilet paper, and they're used in takeout food packaging and even pizza boxes. And that's just a few. So how does exposure to these uh, chemicals, forever chemicals, affect our health? Well, first of all, they've been in the environment now for over 75 years. And the CDC says there is now sufficient evidence that in the liver, for example, they can cause changes in liver enzymes and increases in cholesterol levels. In the immune system, they can lower antibody response to vaccines. They can cause kidney and testicular cancer. In pregnant uh, persons, they can cause pregnancy-induced hypertension, preeclampsia, and decrease in the birth weight of the baby. So how do you know if you've been exposed? Well, again, 90% of us have been exposed to these things, but if you're worried that you've lived near a toxic source of these uh, chemicals, your clinicians can order a blood test for PFAS blood levels. Now, your health insurer might not pay for them. You might wanna check. But the CDC notes that there are limitations even if you get the blood test because they don't identify the source of the exposure. They don't tell you if whatever current illness you have can be attributed to PFAS exposure and they're not predictive of future health outcomes. Nobody really knows at this point, uh, you know, cause and effect and, and what to do with this. The CDC notes that there are no approved treatments at this time to remove these PFAS from the body. So what can we do? It seems like we should try to avoid them if possible. We can't do anything about the air that we breathe as individuals, but I checked around on the internet and I came across a good article from CNN, from March, uh, CNN News from March 20th of last year, and I'll include the reference. But they quote some environmental experts who say you can reduce your exposure to PFASs by one, avoiding stain resistant carpets, stain resistant upholstery, and waterproofing sprays. They suggest you avoid non stick cookware. They suggest using cast iron, stainless steel, glass, or enamel products instead of non stick cookware. They suggest that you don't eat microwave popcorn or greasy foods that are wrapped in grease resistant paper and avoid uh, takeout containers and other food packaging. I don't know how you're gonna do that, but you know, we can try. They suggest that we cook at home and eat more fresh foods. That's good advice. Uh, they suggest that we check labels for the ingredient P T F E or Watch for things that say floral ingredients and avoid these. They say you should look for products that are labeled BPA free. They say that we should start uh, avoiding cosmetics that are labeled wear resistant or long lasting because they can have high le higher levels of PFAS compounds. They suggest that you choose uncoated nylon or silk dental floss or one that's coated in natural wax. So those are some suggestions. Uh, remember that at this time, there's no approved treatments to get rid of these PFAS chemicals from your body. Maybe sometime in the future, they'll have something for that. So I hope that this information has been helpful. Please like, please share this video. Please leave comments, you know, share it with your family members, share it with your friends. 
because we're all in the same world with the same exposure. Well, some people probably have more exposure than others to these forever chemicals. I'll include the references. Take care, folks, and be well.